Hello everyone. In this last lecture on inverters of power electronics, we will be learning about multi-level inverters. These inverters are very useful and these are really used in, uh, used in solar panels. That is, in solar power plants, the solar panels are connected to the batteries and the, those batteries are connected uh, or those power, uh, power elements are connected to the grid using the multi-level inverters. Another interesting inverter is multi-level inverter. These kind of inverters are generally used in solar plants because the solar plants are, gener uh, are actually uh, storing their, uh, the solar energy through solar panels are actually stored in uh, batteries and those batteries when needing to get connect to the, connected to the grid, uh, their voltage has to be converted into sinusoidal voltage uh, or nearly sinusoidal voltage. That is the voltage has to be inverted. We cannot connect DC voltage to the grid. So what happens is there are multiple batteries for multiple solar panels and those batteries uh, need to be uh, inverted. The voltage of those batteries need to be inverted and in this case we use multi-level inverter. Here we have presented an example of seven level inverter uh, formed by three batteries. Each of the batteries have the same voltage VDC. We can see if we remember uh, this is this individual, this small part is actually each of these three parts is actually a full bridge inverter so we can see we have three full bridge inverters in series this is connected to the output this is connected in series with the next full bridge inverter again this is connected in series with the next full bridge inverter and from the uh, last full bridge inverter we get the output so we get the output here as a result the multi-level inverter is actually full bridge inverters connected in series but the switching pattern is a little different than the full bridge inverters we will see the switching pattern shortly now at first phase we are considering that switch 1 4 5 8 9 12 are on that is this diagonal switches are on we are considering this is our first phase, phase of calculation then let us look how the current flows here we have output so we, have we are considering this is plus and this is minus so current flows from plus to minus so this direction current flows in the output and after that it comes through this direction it reaches 1 VDC from minus to plus then again to this direction it reaches another VDC then again to this direction it reaches another VDC and it reaches the output. So we can say if this is the output VO from bottom it reaches the first VDC here minus here plus then it reaches the second VDC also in the direction minus plus then it reaches the third VDC also in the direction minus plus VDC VDC a, B, C. So the output, the output in this case is equal to P, V, D, C. So the output voltage in this case of the three voltage sources are in series and the output voltage will be P, V, D, C. In the next phase, what happens is all the switching combinations remain same. Only the switch 1, this is closed and uh, this is open and this is closed. As a result, how the direction of the current we can see that direction of the current follows this path. If we draw the direction of the current path, then it happens is this voltage in no current flows to this voltage source. We have this VDC in series with the VDC below, this VDC and this entire thing is connected to the out VDC. DAC. So the V output plus minus is equal to 2 VDC in the second phase. In the third phase, we can see that the current flow third phase is third phase is almost similar to the second phase, only switch 5 is open and switch 7 is closed. So the direction of the current, the, the path of the current is similar to what I'm drawing here. So we see 
in the path of the current there is only one v vdc involved and that is connected to the resistance or the output so we get vdc we get plus minus v output is equal to vdc so at phase one we had t vdc phase two we had two vdc now we have v output is equal to vdc now phase four is again same as phase three but in this case switch number 9 is open and 11 is closed then the direction the path the current path is this that is in no cases the current flows to vdc as a result the the output is generally is short circuited and as a result there is no voltage source that goes into the path of the output and the output is equal to zero volt now in the phase 5 which is same as phase 4 but in this case switch number 4 is opened and switch number 2 is closed the current path is interesting the current path is in this direction from there it goes through the negative end of VDC then comes here it, uh, then comes here it goes to this direction then comes here, it goes to this direction. So as a result, we can see that the current enters through the negative end of VDC. Through the negative end of VDC. In all the other cases, all the earlier cases, the current was entering through positive end. Here it enters through negative end. So V output would be equal to minus VDC. In the next phase, phase 6 is same as phase 5, only difference being switch number 8 is open and switch number 6 is closed. If this happens, the direction of the current flow is, it comes here, it goes to the negative of the first VDC, then it comes here, again it goes to the negative of the second VDC, then it comes here and it doesn't go to the VDC and it directly goes to the output. So the equivalent circuit in operation are actually this. We get VDC, VDC and output plus minus V output is equal to minus 2 VDC. The seventh phase is similar to the sixth phase but in this case switch number 12 is turned on and switch number 10 is uh, turned on. So the current direction is here, it goes to the negative of first VDC, again here, it goes to the negative of second VDC, here, it goes to the negative of third VDC and goes to the output. So we get T VDCs are involved, connected to the resistor, we have plus minus V output, VDC, VDC. So we get V output is equal to P V D C. Now these are the seven phases which in operational and the switching pattern is phase one goes to the next switch is phase two, phase three, phase four, five, six, seven, and from phase seven it goes back to phase six, phase five, phase four, phase three phase 2, phase 1. That is, it. Uh, the phases of the switching pattern circles in this direction. If the switching pattern circles in this direction, at phase 1 the voltage was 3 volt, phase 2, or 3 V, actually 3, it won't be 3 V, it's 3 V D C. Then we have 2 V D C, V D C 0, minus V D C, minus 2 V D C, minus 3 V D C. Now again phase 6, which is this, so we have minus 2 VDC, again phase 5, minus 2 VDC, again phase 4, 0. And this is how uh, the sinus of this thing will continue. And we can see we, here we have used 7 levels, but if we had used more levels, that is we have, if we had used more batteries and more sources, uh, these intervals would be less and uh, the output voltage wave shape will look more and more like sinusoid that is the more the number of levels the more closer to the sinusoid we can get using 
multi-level inverters. That is all with rectifiers. If you have any queries, you can ask them in the discussion box and I will be happy to answer those. We will be discussing all the problems in our problem solving class as well. Thank you so much.